What is up, everybody? Mrs. Repertis here. Welcome to Unit 9, Globalization. 9.1 and 9.2, Advances and Limitations of Technology. Your teacher, Mr. Repertis, my husband, is amazing. Can't go. What? Start teaching. New mo Why? New modes of communication. Okay, not bad. So let's rock and roll here on some advances of technology. Most of these things should be pretty obvious to you. This is really, this is kind of a, this unit nine, I find to be a little more kind of just stuff that you probably already know, but I'm going to try and synthesize or put together and what makes sense to you. So number one, in terms of this technology of the 20th and 21st century is new modes of communication. There's really two main ways we see this. One is through communication equipment, radios in the 30s. And all this stuff just allows people to spread messages. So we have radio in the 30s. We talked about FDR and Hitler with that. We have television in the 50s, fax machines in the 80s. And if you don't know what a fax machine is, this is one right now, that, or one right here that obviously wasn't reviewed very well on Amazon. Um, so we have fax machines that allow you to transmit paper documents um, from one place to another, which makes business life so much easier in the 80s and 90s. And people thought saw this as a huge revolution um, in communication. And then you have cell phones in the 90s and early 2000s, which are still evolving today. And then, of course, you have the Internet, which started in the mid 90s and really kind of took off in the early 2000s. And these allow for better communication between regions, between people. Also, we have better transportation. Air travel really takes off in no pun intended, really takes off in the 1950s. And we also have better shipping and shipping containers where you can have a big kind of huge ship and put and stack shipping containers on top. If you ever are going down kind of a, a river, especially on the coastline into a port city, you will see these huge boats with these huge shipping containers stacked up on top, which allow the greater transportation of goods. What are the effects of these, of the communication and transportation? We are reducing the econ or geographic barriers um, in terms of incorporating more people, more regions, more areas into this global network of trade places that couldn't have been involved before because of limitation of communication and transportation, now you can include them. So that leads directly to not only reducing these barriers, but also an increase in trade because more people can have access to goods. And the last is just the ability to spread news and information. It's cell phones, internet, you can just, you can find out what's going on in the world and see a video like that when if you went back 50 years ago, you would have to wait until a newspaper released some information to let you know and and that would be your main source of, of news. Number two, technology, energy and exploration, um, energy exploration and production are going to increase. During the 20, it's the 20th and 21st century, we see this increase in attempting to extract energy for all of the production of things that require electricity or some type of energy source. So the main things that are going to be used are petroleum, which is oil and gas. And this is our map of countries that produce petroleum, um, the major manufacturers of petroleum around the world today. Um, it's not an exhaustive list. Other countries have it, but these are kind of the top producers. And then over here is the second thing, which is nuclear power, which is using harnessing that uranium and that nuclear energy that we talked about with the atomic bomb and then putting it into a power source. And the countries that have access to nuclear reactors today and power plants are have red dots here. So you can see we're talking primarily industrialized or industrializing countries, um, and it reduces the burden and reliance on oil and gas. The problem with nuclear energy, and we saw this in Chernobyl, um, great show on HBO, by the way, we saw this in Chernobyl where there's a, their nuclear reactor in the Soviet Union has a meltdown, and the meltdown causes the release of um, atomic particles, which leads to radiation poisoning. So that's kind of the fear of using nuclear power. We also have increased use of birth or increased access of birth control um, because outside of birth control has been used forever. But in the 60s and 70s, we have access to birth control pills and new access of um, birth control for women. This gives females a greater control over fertility, meaning that a married female can decide when she wants to have kids instead of kind of just being surprised. So there's more family planning that's involved in this. Um, it allows women to stay in school if they want. It allows women to stay in the workforce because um, traditionally women have been ex expected to be the caretakers of the children. Um, and what we see is because of this increased access to birth control, we see a decline in fertility rates in countries where birth control is available. So you can see this is 
um, the percentage of people in each country, a lot of charts in this unit, by the way, um, you can see the access of birth control or the use of birth control based on the percentage of females. So blue here is over 65%. Um, and then yellow is less than 25%. So that's that. Now, this is, take a look at this chart here, which is birth control use. And then if you look at this chart here, this is birth rates. So the areas here that have don't have access or are not using birth control, obviously their birth rate is higher. You can see like right here, like Afghanistan, Pakistan, right here, they're gonna have a higher rate and you can see in the darker red. So more access to birth control and, and affordable means less birth rate. The problem that you run into is if the population in these countries go up, there's not enough jobs and it's not sustainable to um, for these people who are being born to eventually enter the workforce because there's not enough jobs because the population is growing so much at the lower level. More on that in class. Also, with one other technology, two more. This is called the Green Revolution. The AP world loves this, this topic. Um, so don't sleep on this topic. Don't ignore it. They're going to be in the 60s and 70s because of technological advances, especially with food production. Um, they're going to scientists discover ways to chemically and genetically enhance food so it can withstand environmental issues whether that is flooding whether that is drought whether that is um, pests who who destroy crops that this new type of food this genetically chemically modified food is going to lead to an increase in agricultural productivity and one of the themes in ap world is more food equals more people. And what we see is this huge population boom in the 60s, 70s, and 80s because of this increased food production, generally in unindustrialized countries. So countries that, especially here in East Asia, Southeast Asia, and the Middle East that are not fully industrialized are now going to have better access to food, even without the farm equipment, because of this new genetically and chemically modified thing. So we have less people dying. Um, we see increase in wheat production. That's the yellow and the red is the increase in rice production. You can see the percentage that it increased between the 60s and the 80s. So up to 81 percent net increase yield is more food for people. And again, more food, more people. And last but not least, we just have people living longer. More advances medically just means people are living longer. And from the 50s through today, we've just had more just treatments for illness. Um, we have antibiotics where people would have died in the past because of these viruses. Um, now they are feeling okay. Um, the polio vaccine, which before the 1950s, polio was a disease that people got that was contagious that led to paralysis and eventually death. And that has pretty much been eliminated. No one gets polio anymore. If you have a parent from another country um, and they were born in usually like before the 1980s, they might have, and if you have a, a grandparent who was born in the United States before the 70s, um, you, you might see a ring around their arm where they got the polio vaccine. They used to give the polio vaccine through a, a shot. It was like a circular shot. Um, and now they give it through an oral vaccine. But if you ask a parent or a grandparent if they have a little scar here, and it's a little circle scar, that's from the polio vaccine. Um, last two things. In terms of medical advances, that's happening, but there's still diseases in impoverished countries that still exist that people in the Western industrialized world don't really have to deal with. One is tuberculosis, which is a illness of the lungs. This is the rate of tuberculosis around the world. The darker the blue, the more common it is. And also we have malaria, which is the green countries are pretty much malaria free. The blue countries are eliminating it and the red countries, um, it's a major problem. And malaria is spread through mosquitoes um, and it's much more common in unindustrialized, heavily populated areas. Last, so we have that in impoverished countries. Then we have the westernized, industrialized, wealthy countries. We do have incident issues there as well, where we have diseases that are going to be have a high incidence in these areas. So it's, look, we're looking like, oh man, it must suck to be in sub-Saharan Africa. Oh man, it must stink to be in sub-Saharan Africa. And then we get here and we're like, oh man, it must stink to be an industrialized country because as a result of this increased longevity in the Western world, we're going to see other diseases pop up at higher rates that didn't before because people were dying at a younger age. So life expectancy has increased in the Western world. But as a result of that, we see an increase in Alzheimer's, an increase in heart disease, also because of diets in the Western world and just junk food. We see an increase in um, other kind of issues of diabetes that you wouldn't see in a sub-Saharan Africa. So we see some bad things with diseases. 
that's the medical advances. That's the scientific and technological advances. This is like a great SAQ type question, just an FYI. Could see stuff like this has popped up in the past. That's all I got. You know the deal. Shoot, before I forget, there is one last thing, emergent diseases. These are diseases that emerge and kind of come out of nowhere. We see an influenza outbreak after World War I called the influenza outbreak, the pandemic of 1918. Every once in a while, there's something that pops up around the world that everyone thinks is going to spread and kill everybody. In the 1980s, we see the emergence of HIV and AIDS, which is generally a sexually transmitted disease, also spread through blood that um, emerges and people don't know where it comes from in the 80s. Uh, today around the world, this is the rate of HIV and AIDS. You can see Sub-Saharan Africa has between, some areas have between 50 to 50%. As always, any questions, write them down. Let Mr. Rev. Curtis know. I'm out. Peace.